Coming up on City Scene, we head to the streets to check in on two big summer construction projects. And keeping your lawn looking good can be a big summer project for many folks, but you need to know about some watering restrictions. And then we sit down with the new Sioux Falls Fire Rescue Chief. Welcome to City Scene right here on City Link, where each month we go all around the departments in the city of Sioux Falls. And today we start with a sit down with the new Sioux Falls Fire Rescue Chief. Hello, I'm Division Chief Steve Fessler with Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. And today I'm speaking with Fire Chief Brad Goodroad. And uh, we're going to want to talk a little bit about some of his visions and plans for Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. Welcome, Chief. Yep, good to be here. Um, I know recently we spent some time going through some of the uh, uh, strategic plan for Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. And I know a lot of those goals that, have, that we've come up with really align along with your personal vision and plans for where you'd like to see Sioux Falls Fire Rescue go in the next three to five years and beyond. Sure. I uh, just wonder if you can uh, give us a little more information on that and uh, what you're kind of looking for. Yeah, what I really enjoyed about that process is we included um, all ranks and some external stakeholders in it. Um, so we had every um, kind of a representation of, of each uh, rank and uh, took input. We also took uh, some surveys and really got input from uh, you know, all the members of Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. And one of the first things we looked at was our uh, kind of our mission statement, our vision, and our values. Uh, we really wanted to align those with new leadership. So in, in this transition time and, and moving on to you know, new leadership, we really looked at what those are, what they are currently, and um, is there something that we want to change with that? So we took a, a survey for throughout the whole department and uh, really found out what their true values are. And then we took those values uh, and created a, a kind of a value um, statement from there. Okay. And I, I know in the, like I said, in the strategic planning process, w there's quite a few different goals that were set. and. Um, one of them is uh, community risk reduction. Can you tell me a little more about that? Sure, my vision of community risk reduction is it goes beyond just prevention, just fire prevention. A lot of people, when they think of that, they narrow that down. What we want to look at is more of a holistic approach to community risk reduction. So it's everything from our EMS calls to our USAR to our HAZMAT. You know, as a department, we're beyond fire. We're now we're more of an all hazards um, mitigation department. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at community risk reduction, you're looking at that through all those things. So you try and um, layer that community risk reduction and all those goals and, and objectives that we've created in the plan. Okay. And I suppose that's going to also kind of lend itself towards some more efficiencies in, in the department and, and different things that happen. Right. One of our um, overreaching goals is efficiencies on the department. You know, as the city um, struggles with less uh, tax revenue, we still want to provide that same great service to Sioux Falls and the community. So in looking at that, we need to really look at how we're doing things and, and efficiencies. We do have a, a third party study coming this year. Uh, so we'll work directly with them and some other departments and uh, really look at our processes. Everything we do, every part of our process, um, our deployment strategy, where our stations are located, uh, we'll really look into that and, and get into that pretty deep. And then I'm excited about that because I think we're going to find some real good uh, efficiencies that we aren't seeing ourselves mm -hmm. um, through that partnership and that study. Having another eye look at things. Yep. Okay. And I, I know you personally, uh, an important thing to you is the health and safety of our, our members. Mm -hmm. and, and that was a big goal is within our health and safety. Can you talk a little more on that? Sure. That's one of our overreaching goals also is health and safety as a general term. Uh, you know, when you break that down, you know, we're looking at things like uh, cancer prevention. Um, you're looking at uh, peer wellness coaches and peer support teams. We really want to enhance those. You know, we have great members in our department, um, and with the peer wellness coaches, uh, they're able to take those five pillars that the city has. Um, it gives you that good work-life balance, and uh, and identify who is in charge of all those those five areas, and really break that down and enhance that group. So we're really doing some great work there to to enhance that, and that is part of the plan. And, um, also the peer uh, support team, you know, through uh, our calls and things that we're exposed to, um, it can take an emotional toll on firefighters. And what we really want to do is, is have this team uh, be that peer, you know, be that firefighter to firefighter link in our, in our program. We have other resources, you know, EAP and, and chaplains, but 
the peer support team is a, is a really good resource and I really want to ramp that, that team up. Okay. And, and with you being the, the new fire chief and all with us, uh, I know you're looking at uh, professional de development from right. the, the starting firefighter all the way up through, through upper management to yourself and uh, what, what are some of your thoughts in that area? Yeah, you know, it's a formalized um, professional development plan is what I'd like to come out of this. You know, we have, uh, we have certifications, we have things, we have things in place, people kind of understand it, but we really don't have a formalized written professional standard or professional plan, mm -hmm. um, development plan for not only firefighters themselves, but for the department overall. So one of my visions for this and the strategic goal there is to develop a written, um, very formalized professional development plan for everyone on the department. Okay. And, and I, you're a collaborative type of person. You're looking at uh, dealing with more partners in the community across all the departments. Uh, thoughts on that? Sure. Um, again, yeah, I am a collaborative person, and uh, you know that's one of the things as an overreaching goal that I want to have. Um, that's not a specific goal, but I just want that to be the way we operate um, in everything that we do. Uh, so it's collaboration and, and working with uh, community partnerships, working with other city departments, um, and having that, finding those opportunities that we might be missing uh, to work collaboratively together on things and, and to improve. Um, and also, you know, part of this strategic plan is diversity and inclusion. Uh, we have a committee that is a diversity and inclusion committee, and uh, that committee is, has really started to uh, develop, and we want to reach out to all the different uh, ethnic leaders within the community. Mm -hmm. partner them up with somebody on that committee uh, and really understand and, and work on uh, some recruiting pieces so that uh, you know all different cultures, ethnic backgrounds, um, gender, they're all welcome and, and we're able to uh, show them how they could best prepare themselves to become a firefighter and how we could best help them um, with our service delivery also. Thank you Chief Goodrood. If you'd like to learn more about Sioux Falls Fire Rescue or if you're interested in becoming a firefighter with us We'd like you to go to SiouxFalls.org slash fire. Now let's cruise on over to Louise and Western Avenues and get an update on some big construction projects going on. Hi again, Sioux Falls. We are in the heat of the summer and construction season has been moving along perfectly. We welcome back to the show Josh Vandenboss, who is our project manager for one of our largest projects in the city at 69th Street and Western Avenue. Hi, Josh. Hi. So give our viewers an update on what's going on at this very busy intersection. Well, to date we have most of the concrete in phase one, which would be the north side of 69th Street okay. and all of Western Avenue north of 69th Street. Excellent. So is traffic traveling on those lanes yet? They, they're, tra they're traveling on the newest lanes of concrete on the west side. Okay, great. So what's coming up in the next month for our viewers? Well, in the next month, I would expect them to finish the asphalt on the north side of 69th Street heading towards Minnesota and heading towards the Landell Circle, which is the far west side of the project. Okay. And then shortly after that, I would envision we'd get into the phase two, which is the south side of 69th and all of western south of 69th Street. And then that's when those drivers are gonna be traveling all on brand new surface, right? Correct. All right. So, so far, um, how's it been going? Has there been a lot of you know concerns from the public? Has there been a lot of business concerns? Kind of give our viewers an update on just what's been going on with the with the public out here it's been pretty pretty quiet project for the most part uh, as with every project you have your concerns from the traveling public right. but for the most part it's been pretty smooth after a few bouts of rain there and dry weather we've been going going very good and the area is still open to traffic right correct and is there any upcoming closures that our drivers should be aware of later this fall we will be closing Western Avenue south of 69th okay. Street for about two maybe three weeks and and the reason for that is why the work the work limits get very tight and it's okay. not conducive towards keeping traffic. Okay. So behind us right now there's a lot of utility work going on. So how have the utilities been? Have they been keeping up keeping up with us as we're moving along quickly? Absolutely. There's not much for utilities other than storm sewer. Okay. And so that kind of speeds up the process on a project like this. Okay. So overall completion will the will the project be done by by the time snow flies? We anticipate mid October. We should oh. have everything done. There might be some miscellaneous sidewalk and uh, Revegetating that might have to happen next spring. So um, I forget, is there going to be double left turn lanes and right turn lanes on all legs, or what? What is this intersection going to look like once it's done? There'll be a double left. Uh, there'll be two double lefts, north and south, and then east and west. It's a single left turn, but it's a very long 
very long turn lane. Okay. And that's mainly for traffic projections, right? We want to make sure this, this intersection can grow with us, right? Correct. Okay. Are there any special pedestrian enhancements that we're making along the corridor? We are uh, adding sidewalk wherever sidewalk hasn't been installed already. And along Western Avenue on the west side, we're having a nine to 10 foot pedestrian path that'll okay. connect to uh, Yankton Trail. Excellent, wonderful. So that'll that'll just tie those those users down to the bike trail, the Big Sioux River bike trail. Yep, yep awesome. farm field. In, yep. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna jump over to another project that you're working on that hasn't started yet, and that but it's still in one of those high profile projects, Arrowhead Parkway from Sycamore over to um, Highline or Veterans Parkway. Can you give our, I know that's weird, we've been designing and planning on construction in 2017, but what, what's the status of that project? Well, currently we're gonna go out to bids on July 19th. Okay. Uh, this, is an SD, this is an SDDOT project, so okay. we're gonna go out to bid uh, through Pier, and then we'd hope to start very shortly after that. Uh, we're gonna take the current four or five lane facility, make it a six lane median section. Okay. Uh, so we anticipate getting a portion of the project done this fall, and then the majority of the project's gonna be next year in 2018. Great, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Well, our last update for today is over on the last big project we have for the year, and it's at 49th Street and Louise Avenue area over by the Empire Mall. We have Pat Dressen here from HDR. Pat, welcome to the show. Thank you. So we were here about three, maybe two months ago, getting an update from Dustin on just basically the beginning of the project and how well it was going. Is it continued to go well over the last couple months? Well, the contractors are working very hard, and we're still ahead of schedule. We're still doing well. The uh, last couple of rains have slowed us down a little bit, but we're still doing very well. The contractor's working very hard, okay. trying to maintain schedule. So tell me, what are, what are some milestones that we've achieved already then in the project? We are completed with phase one. So when you come down here, you'll actually be driving on our new concrete paving. Great. Uh, 49th Street is back open, so there's no more detour of 49th Street. Uh, all lanes are one lane in each direction. We're trying to maintain okay. a center turn lane wherever we can. Uh, that's about, the big updates. How about all the work at the Empire Mall with all the parking lot improvements? Is, all, are, is that all that done? Yes, all the work in the Empire Mall is done. We planted some trees back and some medians and whatnot back in there. It's all the black work. Black dirt work is complete. Okay. So the uh, operation of the Empire Mall is back to normal. Okay, so then, uh, so basically we're focusing on 49th Street right now or are we also working on Louise? We're working on both. We're okay. working on uh, east side of 49th Street and Louise Avenue on the east side. Okay. So how have the property owners and the business owners been? Has it been pretty quiet? Like we just came from 69th and Western and the relationships with the property owners were very well. How has it been here? Yeah, our relationship with our property owners is going very well. Okay. They uh, obviously had some major interruptions to some of their businesses, but uh, communication with them has been cr crucial along this whole project. and. Uh, They've been very, very, very well to work with. So, the, you know, one of the main reasons we were doing this project is capacity as well as that we just had tired, tired pavement. I do also notice we have some very large storm, storm sewer pipes going in. Can you guys give our viewers an update on what, what's existing for storm drainage and what we're putting in? The, uh, well, the intersection of 49th and Louise obviously used to flood. Yep. And to, to help alleviate some of that, we're not going to cure all of it, we're going to help alleviate, we're going to put a 12 by 5 box culvert in in place of a 54 inch storm sewer pipe. Okay, so that's pretty big. So that's, <laughs> that's real big. Yeah. So that'll help out drainage purposes a lot. It's still going to neck down until we get some more things done late in the right. future projects, but uh, as far as in flooding in the intersection should alleviate. So we have to, the city has to improve the size of the pipes all the way to the Big Sioux River, right? right to be correct. able to really help out. Okay, great. Yep. How about anything unique about this about this project? Has there been anything, you know, with underground work? Oh, how the underground utilities been? I know that there's been a kind of a central underground utility, I guess, mecca right there at 49th and Louise. Has that been pretty difficult to deal with? Well, there's a, there's a big junction box, we call it on the storm sewer, that connects the 12 by five box culvert to an eight by four box culvert, to uh, the 84 inch arch pipe. So there's just a, oh, a huge amount of storm yeah. sewer that comes through that intersection. And that junction box is complete now. That's why we were able to open 49th Street back up Excellent. to traffic, because we were done with that junction box. And so, and the, we brought a brand new water main all the way down the Louise. So okay. we should have good utilities underneath there for Great. a long time to last. So what can we expect in the upcoming months? When is the project completion? Project completion still November 11th, okay. that, so we're shooting to get done by then. The uh, in the next few months we're gonna you'll see another traffic switch where we'll then we'll be working on the center median. Okay. And people will be driving on both sides of us. Great. Uh, we'll should be getting done with 49th Street here 
in another couple months and be moving along with the project. From orange cone zones to going green in your backyard. Everyone loves a green lawn in the summer and spring, but you need to know about some watering restrictions to make sure that the environment stays safe. Jessica? Here in Sioux Falls, we do have a lawn watering program that's divided up into three different stages. For the most part, we will always be in stage one. The stages of the lawn watering program are really determined by the flow of the Big Sioux River. Right now we are in stage one, and so basically what that means is if you have an even numbered house on your address, you can water on even numbered days. If you have an odd numbered house address, you can water on odd numbered days. No water user at all is allowed to water between noon and 5 p.m. That's basically because the evaporation rate is so high, and we really want to manage our water resources wisely here in Sioux Falls. So you can water every other day, it's just going to depend on your house number and the calendar date. So we do want to make sure that everyone is using our water resources wisely. So if you see something, we want you to say something. If somebody is watering between the hours of noon and five, or if there is somebody who is watering every day of the week when they shouldn't be, we want you to call city offices and report that to us and we'll send somebody out to check on it. However, there are some exceptions. If you are putting in new sod, you can call the city and get a special permit to water every day, but you do need to let us know and we'll work with you on that. So the best time to water your lawn is in the morning because the evaporation rates are lower, but we also want to water infrequently, but a good thorough soak for your lawn. That will cause the roots to grow down deeper and make your grass actually stronger. Another thing that we tell people is to uh, let your grass grow a little bit higher. That will provide shade for the roots. And then when you do mow, it's best to leave the grass clippings on the grass because uh, that will also provide some shade for your grass as well. So doing things like that uh, will help you to conserve water on your own. The City of Sioux Falls has lots of resources available to you to help you conserve water. We've got free water conservation devices available at City Hall and the Utility Billing Office. We also have some rebates available for irrigation timers and rainfall sensors. For more information about the free items that we have, as well as tips on how to save water at your home, visit SiouxFalls.org. And of course, with summer and all of that lawn watering comes standing water, which can also increase concerns for mosquitoes. Combating those little pests, though, is on the city's agenda. Katie Wick, tell us how. Summertime is full of warm weather, sunshine, and lots of outdoor activities. Along with all of that comes something we don't always enjoy, and that's those pesky mosquitoes. We're here with Denise Patton from the City Health Department to talk about mosquitoes this summer. Thanks for joining us, Denise. Thank you. What is the City Health Department doing um, to help combat some of the mosquitoes that can not only be pesky but cause illness, like West Nile? Right. You know, we have actually an integrated pest management program. That's what any good pest control program is, and it consists of four different parts. So we have a source reduction component, which means that we're out there trying to get rid of the sources that would breed mosquitoes. So tires, I have the landfills doing this great tire removal program right now through a grant. Um, the project Nice and Keep that we do every spring is also a really good component of source reduction for us. So we're getting rid of buckets and different things that might just be laying around. So that's kind of the inexpensive, easy way to start any control program. The second step is surveillance, us being out there looking for things. And we've been um, doing surveillance and control since about late April, early May and have treated over 11,000 sites um, for storm sewers already and several hundred detention ponds, retention ponds, standing water, other treatments. So we've been very, very busy out doing both surveillance and control, which are the, uh, the next two steps of an integrated pest control management program. And then the last step is education. And we really, really try to put good information out on our website to um, go to some of the events that are going on around Sioux Falls, like the concerts in the parks and stuff. We are um, trying to be a presence out there with some information for people if they need it. We also have little deep packets that we're handing out, kind of practice what we preach. If you're going to be outdoors, it's a good thing to have. So those four steps are really important and, and we're doing a lot of things in the community to just kind of stay one step ahead. What, what are some personal things that people can do when they're going to some of those outdoor events or around their backyard, those kind of things to help prevent the spread of West Nile um, disease? Right, you know, this is something that we preach every year and of course, you know, people have heard a lot of these things, but if you are gonna be outdoors in the evening or in the morning where mosquitoes are most active, try to have some sort of protection on, whether that's longer sleeves 
or some sort of a bug spray. There's very natural ones. There's ones with DEET or picaridin in them that are meant to last a little bit longer, but whatever you choose, just something is a good thing. Making sure that water isn't standing in your yard or in, in your place of business. If you can dump a bucket or do some of those things, that's always good. Um, just be very aware, and if you don't need to be outdoors, then maybe you don't. So um, hopefully together with the, the work that we're doing in public areas and what you're doing on your personal property, we can team up and make sure that there's a good summer ahead of us. All right. Well, we appreciate your information. If someone has questions for you directly or the health department, what number can they call? Yeah, we do have a mosquito control hotline. They can call 367-8799. We thank you for your time and information, Denise. It's always very helpful. Thanks, everybody. We hope that you have a very fun and safe summer. They're cute, cuddly, and for a short time, Sioux Falls is their home. I'm a company president working downtown. I'm a college student. I'm a full-time employee. I'm a husband and a father. I'm a son and a brother. I'm a wife and a mother. And I ride a bicycle as well. And I'm a bike commuter. And I'm a cyclist. And I'll look out for you, you look out for me. The city of Sioux Falls has a powerful way you can turn this into this. The free sanitary landfill pass can help you get rid of clutter, improve the look of your home, reduce areas that mosquitoes breed in your yard, and help the environment. Load up your stuff, grab your free pass, tarp your load, and bring it to the landfill. It's that easy. Brought to you by the City of Sioux Falls Sanitary Landfill. Welcome back. We'll cool off this summer with some great books because the Siouxland Library's reading program is heating up. Welcome to the library, everybody. I'm Dan Neves, and today I'm at the Crooks Branch Library with Branch Librarian Alicia Boyson. Welcome. Back again. Back again. It's been a little while. About a year. About a year. Yeah. Oh, it must mean we're, we're planning a certain theme here. Yeah. Well, Alicia, you are our, our system-wide Read Squared coordinator, so you handle our reading program. Right. Uh, behind the scenes and kind of spearheading a team of people that mm -hmm. kind of tell us how it's going to work. Yeah, I definitely have a great team helping me out, so don't give me too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, we have kind of a mix-up this year, don't we? we we've, uh, we've been doing Read Squared for a number of years now. It's kind of old trick, but our reading program has changed up this year. We're making it a little easier to use, maybe? I think so. And going by what staff and what customers have, have told us feedback from the last couple of years, it's pretty exciting. So can you give us a little overview of what we can expect this year? What do our reading programs look like? Yeah, Dan, we've actually changed it quite a bit from the past few years that we've done. So we've added a third age group. So we've got our K through third age group. We've got our fourth through sixth, and then we have seventh through twelfth. And those are all what grade you will be in in the fall. So I know sometimes it's a little confusing when we're between school years, but it's whatever grade you're going to be in the fall. And then with um, each program, we have more of the guaranteed prizes, where in the past few summers we've kind of done the prize drawings. And like you said, it's all feedback from our customers and what they would like to see from their summer reading program. And we have um, as most folks know, we've gotten a definite start and a definite end to the program, and it's not just that monthly program that goes on um, month after month throughout the year. So it's going now. When does it end? The program ends on August 10th, just with our, um, if people have been participating in our box programs that we have been doing, so those weekly programs that you're going to the library and attending, those, the last one is on August 10th, so the program ends on August 10th, so easy date to remember. So you mentioned that we're going to have guaranteed prizes this year rather than going into a drawing. Can you tell us a little bit about what we can expect as far as prizes go? Yeah, so there will be three different levels that all three age groups will be able to do. So it kind of is that let's keep you reading throughout the whole summer instead of just reading um, for a little bit and then stopping. So it's we've got a set of coupons. We've got some like physical prizes that they can pick from and then at the very end of the summer once they've completed the entire program we actually have a free book for them to keep take home and read again and again. How do you decide who gets the book? 
Everyone gets the book. That's the best part about the new program is if you complete the program, if you do all the reading requirements, you get to come in and pick a free book from the library. All right. So there's plenty of free books. You don't have to mm -hmm. worry about us running out. No, it's not. You're going into prize drawing. It's um, everybody who, if you're in the K through 3 program, as long as you've read for 45 days, and in the older two programs, as long as you've read at least five books for the summer. That's awesome. I can tell my fifth grade son that he doesn't have to worry that if he's the last one, he's going to get stuck with Barbie. No. <laughs> nope, nope. We'll have lots of books for everyone. And if we do run out, we'll get more and make sure that everyone who um, worked hard and got the goals done for the summer gets that free book. So this is great. The kids can enjoy a summer uh, of reading. They can get prizes. But the prizes are just kind of an added bonus. Why is it important for, for our young readers in the Sioux Falls area to to do this program. Um, and actually the number one prize that they're going to get is the prevention of that summer slide that we always hear about. So the true benefit of the summer reading program is going to be in the fall when they go back to school and they haven't lost any of that um, curriculum that they left school with in the spring. So not only do they get to prevent the summer slide, which will help them do better in school come next year, because we all know, you know, summer, you don't have the routine. This is a good way to keep it up. They get the other prizes. Are there certain books they need to read? Can they read whatever they want? And what if I run out of ideas? Yeah, depth, I mean, that's why we're here as librarians, is to help kids with ideas. So mm -hmm. if, they're, if your child is struggling to find a book, come into your local library. Any of us librarians would be more than happy to help them find the um, book that they're wanting. We do have some requirements that we're asking um, the kids to do. So all of those are on our website, um, sulanlib.readsquared.com, so they can figure out what requirements that they need to fulfill to um, log their reading. Sounds good. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, Alicia, was we kind of went back old school here and the last couple of years it's all been through Read Squared, but we do have a paper option. Yeah, we are still doing the paper option for the youngest two groups, so our kindergarten through third grade and our fourth through sixth graders. Just because we understand it's hard for them to get online every day or even once a week, so if um, parents would prefer to do the paper logs. We definitely still have those and they're available at all of our library locations so they can just stop in at a branch and pick up one of those. Well folks, keep the communication open. Talk to us. Come say hi to us. Stop by any Siouxland Library's location if you need help getting started with the reading program this summer. See the box programs we briefly mentioned here too. You can see all of that at SiouxlandLIB.org. Finally today, we're going to check in with some cute cuddly koalas that you can find at the Great Plains Zoo. I'm Elizabeth Whaley, President and CEO of the Great Plains Zoo, and we're here today at Koala Wilds. We have a brand new koala exhibit. We have two male koalas here from Australia, and this is a pretty great opportunity for our Sioux Falls Great Plains Zoo. Uh, unless you're on the East Coast or the West Coast or two big zoos in Ohio, the only place you're going to see koalas in North America this summer is here in Sioux Falls. We are very lucky to have gotten the koala loan through the San Diego Zoo Global Koala Loan Program. But it's not just luck. I've actually been working on this for nine years with my team. And we've finally gotten to the kind of zoo that we even could be considered for this kind of loan. So we feel very, very blessed, very lucky to have these animals here. And of course, our community and the surrounding states are feeling the very same way. People may not realize that koalas are not bears. They are marsupials. So marsupials are those kinds of animals that have a pouch and carry their young in the pouch. And those young are called joeys. And so Moki was named as a joey because Moki is the word for cloud and he has a nice little white cloud on his hindquarter. We also have Burra, which means big fella. And as a joey, he was a big fella. The Great Plains Zoo is really lucky to have these animals from May through Labor Day. And so people are really coming out to check out these animals. Koalas are amazing, amazing to watch, amazing in their form. And so we're really pleased that so many people are checking out the koalas. We work really closely with the folks at San Diego Zoo Global and the manager of their loan program for koalas. And one of the things that she told us was watch the faces. Don't forget to watch those faces of kids who see a koala in person live for the first time. And that's been just a great part of having koalas is that we're seeing that sense of wonder and that sense of intrigue about these really amazing animals. 
Thanks, Elizabeth, and thank you for joining us here on City Scene, where each month we go all around the departments in the city of Sioux Falls. Of course, if you missed anything, all you need to do is head over to SiouxFalls.org or check us out on YouTube. We'll see you back here next month.